Hey, Dave LaCalle with Head Games Motorworks. Today, we are going to talk about the most challenging port that I think anybody could ever do, and that is the dogleg port on a Subaru. Check it out. As you can see from this video, you can't even see the whole port. It's really, really difficult because you can't see the whole thing. I can't even do this. Look at this. So it, the dog leg is because it basically goes on a crooked angle into the port. And uh, it's really, really difficult to get all the way back there to see the whole thing. If you want results like this, please pay attention. I've said this before and I'll say it again. If you know anybody who's going to try to make this the size of the gasket, kick him right in the front butt. That guy, run. Run away from him very, very far. Because A, there's really no way to make the whole port this size, only the entrance. So we're going to slow the air down and you have a run of potential of putting a hole in the head. So the problem here is I guess this all started in probably the 70s and 80s. And guys would get gaskets and they would port match everything and that crap doesn't really work the company doesn't give a poo poo about you their only thing they are made to do is to seal the head to a header they are not looking for optimized port dimensions remember that now guys this is also going to be a very difficult video to vid because of the angles and ways we have to get in there but we're going to try so this is what we're going to start with and i'll show you what we grind with so here is our five eighths and our three quarter super spiral this is a high helix and then we have our super spiral burrs i'm showing you just the different lengths because this length would not work you need a full six inch length burr to get in there and to see like this is six inch and this is our half inch you need the full the full amount available to you in order to get all the way back there as you can see this is the three quarter super spiral and this is what i'm talking about we're trying to get all the way back in there now i'm just using my finger to do it just to show you but this is we're going to be coming all the way out here and grind all this now this wall right here needs to be pushed back in order for you to get back there and that is done with little bit of grinding we're using the ball because the ball lends its shape to the shape we're trying to make this way you're not over there trying to you know with a small burr and you're trying to make the shape and don't get me wrong this is the honey badger of burrs this thing will also get you in trouble but if you take it slow maybe you can still make the shape with it but this is going to make your life so much easier is using this burr because it's already round and you're trying to make a round shape So this is why we're going to move the wall over because this part of the burr, the shank, needs to have room to go all the way to the back to remove the guide boss. We remove the guide boss because there's no way to port the whole area on the other side of it or around it with it in there. We will run the full length of the guide. As you can tell, there's no guides in it, so there will still not be any kind of issues going on there. But we have to move this wall over and then you can get to this. All right, so now this is roughed in. We removed the guide ball, so you can see on this side, this is the guide ball, so we removed it on this side, and we made a little trench, so we go, just dig in here, you dig in the corner here, but now we can widen this whole port up because we removed the guide ball. So you really just can't do it with it in there. All right, so next we're gonna make a fin out of this. Well, we're gonna grind this side and then we're gonna make a fin. Somehow, some way I tagged this. Uh, always try to not do that, but trying to grind and look through the phone to grind it's not normally my thing so 
it gets a little uh, difficult here. So look, see now I removed the guide balls on this side. Okay, easier. I removed the guide balls on this side. Now both guides are, our guide bosses are gone and it's time to make a fin. You can see the you can see the port is very squarish looking. There's nothing really here. Uh, so it squares here to this corner and this corner. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a fin that comes all the way out here and that's made for airspeed. Let's discuss what I did here. What did you see? You saw me take this point. So the divider is our centering point. I made a trench to come here, make a trench to come here, and that gives us our shape. And then I blend everything in. Now, this is me doing nothing but going, like no pressure at all, just two fingers. You can see how far up the burr goes. See this right here? So you want to really put no effort into like going all the way up the port, all the way up the port. You don't want to do that when you're doing this because if you're pushing, now you're going to get out of round. You never want to get out of round. So you can just do what it will do by itself and don't do any more. All right, so now we're going to try to do the same thing with the floor. As you can tell, it is incredibly hard to see. In fact, Sometimes in your grind, you can't even really see it yourself. You're just kind of going off the, at least I just go off the feel of it. So we're grinding here, we're grinding the wall. You're gonna blend this in, but we're also gonna make a fin out of this area right here. Now this is not as square as the, the roof is, but we need to have fins. So what did I do there? I made a trench. I made a trench coming here, and I made a trench coming there. Yes, it's not easy because it's not a straight line, but you can follow it. So here you go. Came up to here, went all the way back. Then I did the walls. Did the walls, blend everything in. Only choose one wall or one floor. Don't sit there and go willy-nilly on it because you're gonna create a mess. Now, if you also notice that I did not touch the gasket line because we're going to blend it in later. There's no real reason to make it any bigger here because all of our shaping and our gains are going to be inside the port. Now, this head was a pocket port. It's a junk head. So, um, unfortunately, we're not going to go over grinding this. I can just show you. I use our head games half inch and you would want to blend everything you just did in like yay so you do one wall do the other wall and just do the bowl and then you can flip it and do the short side the short turns on the subaru are really really tough to do because they're very very tall from the factory and you really want to lay it back and you want to make this a turn this is a very difficult thing to do um that's could probably do a whole nother video on that but you would basically come in here you would knock off the top side of it and you would blend it into the short term. Maybe we'll make a video of that. All right, so while we have the half inch out, this is the head games, half inch, super spiral burr. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the speed way down and I'm gonna go back over this port and make all the bumps go away with this. So what am I using to grind with? I'm using a GD0603 Makita grinder. And that is really the only grinder I've found where I can use the full six inch burr, no matter how big or small. Uh, and it still doesn't like wrap this thing around my wrist and it still works. And all the other ones, even the other Makita, uh, will bend this really just like first click and it's gone. We're gonna use a Goodson speed controller. 
as you see it's on high i have it on variable speed and i'm going to turn that dude almost all the way down and that's how i'm going to fine grind all this so you see it's kind of a mess you know it's a little um, bumpy and stuff and this would be terrible to sand on so we want to make it smoother to e make it easier to sand what you watched was me coming up to this fin that we made on both sides and then I go over it and I did that on both sides if you keep grinding over this not only will you make a hump on one side which I mean don't get me wrong this is a hump but you will pretty much take the fin that you made away so what you need to do is go all the way up to the last thing that you do is hit it Go on this side, pick a wall, don't go over it, that's it. And when you're doing this, you'll notice I hit the short turns. As long as you you are very careful, the turn, you can hit it, but you don't want to take too much out of it because if you take too much out of it, then you're going to be screwed. Also notice, as I keep saying, look, I'm like right up to the line, but I didn't go over it. So now this thing is still a circle and we can blend all this in with the cartridge roll. This exact port has made 1200 plus horsepower. It's set world records, maybe a 14, 1500 horsepower. This thing works. All right, now we're gonna sand. So this is the first roll we're gonna use. This is a three quarter 60 grit. I use the biggest roll I can stick in there because I wanna keep the shape, right? So if I'm roughing something in, I need to use something like this to uh, Keep the shape now you can see it takes up a quite a bit of the port and that is for a good reason it said just like the burr we want to make sure that we keep the round shape i only did a little section here but look at this so what i'm using is the first say quarter inch of the burr or I'm sorry, of the cartridge roll. I'm only using the first quarter inch of the cartridge roll. You don't want to use back here. You want to make sure that this is on the right angle because if you start hitting back here, you're going to change the shape of the port. So you want to have it so you're on this angle here. Now on this wall, because the way it's shaped, I go back and forth because you can't really hit this right here. This wall's kind of um, it's indented, so you're almost making a trench, come back over it, making a trench, but you don't want to keep going like this or you're going to have a bad day. If you see another one of the videos that we made about somebody else doing porting, they just goes back and forth and that's a terrible day. I did trench here, trench here with the roll, and then the last thing I did was go over this. All right guys, what you notice is I did the same thing as I did with the burr with the cartridge roll. So I made trenches here, trenches here. I do the wall, I do this wall. I go back to the floor, I blend everything in, and I do this last. I do this last because if you keep hitting it, A, you will make this no longer a fin. Either it'll take it out, or it'll change the shape, and we want neither of those. Probably wondering why am I holding a big ass rod in my hand? So, I wanted to show you a tool that we made. This is from Home Depot. It's just a quarter inch prop rod. 
steel pop rod. So we cut it in length. You see we cut it to this length and we do that for a purpose. This is handy roll. You can get that from uh, MSC, I think carries it. And what we did was we roughed off the edges here. So we just made it really nice and round and we cut a slit inside of it. So now you just make yourself a roll. And this is because on a dog leg port, you're not gonna get all the way back with just a cartridge roll. You're gonna need something else. And the flapper, the flapper tool is we made it. And you see, this is how we get all the way back here. Just showing you by hand. So he goes all the way back and you would not be able to do this with a cartridge roll because the cartridge roll is too hard. You need something more malleable. So we make a flapper wheel to get all the way in the back. It'll reach, oh, I lost it, but it'll reach all the way into the bowl area. So I forgot to mention, whenever I do sanding, I don't do it with an electric, I do it with air. I do it with a front exhaust grinder. This is a Clico grinder. You guys are probably not gonna be able to afford this unless you're doing a lot of them. Uh, it really wouldn't make sense because this is like a almost $800 grinder, but front exhaust so that way it blows all of the sand and all the aluminum away from you and you can see what you're working on. I use the same tool that we made for short turns. Now I use it for all short turns, not just this Subaru, but every short turn that we do here, we use a flapper on and it makes it so it doesn't create a pointy edge at the end of it. For the bowls, we are going to use this half inch cartridge roll, 60 grit, said so just, just to rough it in and get all the marks out of it. Right, now we're all roughed in it's time to go to the finishing touches finishing touches means that i hit it with a 60 grit and now we're gonna hit it with a 120 grit for you dudes who think that you're gonna micro polish this thing and it's gonna come out way better uh just stop it has never been like the difference between a world record and just driving or what whatever it is like the the mirror polish is more like if you have a ton of time if you're a very bored person sure i guess you could do that on the exhaust but it's really not going to make it. i just wanted to show again that i only use the top quarter of the roll now you want to get a straight roll because the straight roll wears in a good pattern and well it just what i've always used because if you use the cone type what you're going to do is it's going to have like little tiny pieces and again just like we we're talking about with the burrs it will create a situation where you have bumps. This is the way to go. I'm gonna start first with the flapper because I'm gonna blend everything into the flapper because this is gonna be our final touches.
All right, guys, what you watched was I took the flapper and I only had to do the parts that are not going to be hit by the roll. So I flappered here, I flappered inside here. Now the roll can reach this side. It just can't reach all the way back here. So I blend all this in and then we do this with a cartridge roll. So that way everything blends in. I do the same thing with the roof of the port. Just do the parts that you're not gonna be able to get with the roll. And that includes the short side. You don't wanna hit the short side with the cartridge roll. This will square it. You wanna use the flapper only when it comes to the short term. Now, you'll notice inside here that there's a lot of dark marks. Those dark marks are glue from the cartridge roll, just because that's how it's made. So what I do is I take that flapper we we're just talking about, I cut a piece of Scotch-Brite, and I go back in, and I just remove the glue. And here is our finished product. You see here, you got your divider. See, it wasn't here. We just made it. Made a thin air. So now the air has a direction. Or actually, it's just air speed. So hit with 120 grit and then hit it with that scotch bright and you can see the marks kind of go away and you are left with a killer port if you have any questions feel free to comment below like subscribe we're going to be posting more of these toodles